I am very disappointed in you Xbox right now. I cannot believe it that 63 to 67% of you guys are more interested in having fun playing video games than involving yourself in some nonsense stupid console war. Like, I'm disappointed. How dare you? How dare you accept 30 frames per second so that you can have fun and play a video game? Like, I cannot believe that you would do that. Like, that doesn't make sense. Did you, Microsoft lied to you. Quit having fun. They lied to you. They said 60 FPS is the standard. Like, how dare you? How dare you allow them to get away with this? You need to hold them accountable, my hooved friends say. Our hooved friends are on Twitter and YouTube demanding that we demand better from Microsoft, from a console that they don't even play. I don't even think they play PlayStation 5. They play Twitter. But <laughs> welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and it's time to have a serious discussion about uh, about gaming, man. Just gaming in, ge in general. Um, marketing speak, the promises that were made, um, you know, my past content, stuff like that. We're, we're going to get into this. I'm, I'm going to take up, you know, 10 minutes of your time today and, and kind of talk about this. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. So I did a I did a poll on the YouTube channel today and over there on Twitter. I asked people if we uh, if we believe uh, I asked the Xbox community if they believe Microsoft lied to them. Essentially, I set this up as a troll to troll the ponies because I just wanted to see how many of them were going to come. And man, Xbox fans, I'm I'm proud of you guys. You stood your ground, you held your own, and you delivered a decisive blow to these clowns that are out there trying to convince you that. That, that 30 fps is is unplayable it it is not unplayable it's not ideal i mean we can all admit that like we've all played 60 frames per second games now on our xbox series x and s we all know that yes playing at 60 frames per second is is a more ideal experience and delivers you know a, a better experience plain and simple it does uh but when you when you look at it 30 fps is still an enjoyable experience as long as it's you know locked at 30 frames per second and it's and it's pretty stable that's not a bad experience at, at all does it does it does it um i i think i think the biggest thing with the 30 fps is the like like i said before is the experience on an oled tv i think that that there is just that instant response time on a on a on an oled is is a little bit tough man it, it is a little bit tough it does introduce a little bit more jitter um, but, but, but it's fine. It, it is fine. It's still playable. You can still do it if that's what you got to do. Now, Starfield coming out at 30 frames per second. Yeah. Like I said, not ideal, but still playable. Um, you, you know that if these guys are able to put in a 60 FPS mode, they, they will continue to try the, the technology will evolve. That's the beauty of Microsoft and Xbox games and, and Xbox first party is as, things uh, unless the, the only ones that the only games that i don't see getting like worked on after launch too much are the ones that are that are um that are usually like like um like the the every other year games or the year every year games like like forza i don't i haven't really seen them bring a whole lot of a whole lot of new stuff to that i would like to see them bring some some fsr2 or something to those but i don't, I don't know if they have on xbox i'll have to i'll have to look but you you get what I mean. Like the more that the technology evolves and they and they get these tools and they start building stuff, they will be bringing it to these games later down the road. And I mean, like like think about it. Next generation will be able to buy the the Starfield director's cut, and and it'll be sixty frames per second. We'll get to pay another seventy dollars for for that, and it'll be cool. And then we'll have all the DLC and everything, and like we'll, we'll get a better package and an upgraded a free. Well, or maybe we won't get a free upgrade. You know, that would be pretty cool, but. I, I don't know. Maybe I prefer to buy the, the whole new thing. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That's just the thing, man. I'm, I'm grateful that like 60% of you guys had, uh, held like over 60% of you guys on both polls held your ground and said, look, man, we're just literally here to play the games. Like we want to have fun games. Now I get that. Like, I'm not saying that over there on PlayStation is a bad, is a bad thing. And, and I do, I do kind of, you know, wish that PlayStation would more, would more focus on a 60 FPS experience and kind of just, you know, 
let, I, I wish they both would. I, I mean, that was my, and, and that's, if you go back and you listen to any of my old criticisms over PlayStation, it's always been this. I wish that both consoles would focus on the 60 FPS mode only. No quality modes, period. Like no quality modes. I don't, I don't, I don't want quality modes. I don't want unrealistic expectations. I don't play them anyways. Why waste that development time on a mode that, and no, that, that not a lot of people are going to play. Do you know what I mean? Like why waste that resources when you can invest in the technology to make a 60 FPS game and find ways to make it look incredible. We've seen a lot of exp- examples over the last couple of years during this cross generation period that, that the visuals have been upgraded and we've still gotten 60 frames per second. But then as you start bringing in games like Jedi survivor, Hogwarts Legacy, all these other games that are starting to dip way low on the resolution just to get us that 60 frames per second mode on a 4K TV. I think I think that yes, I, I do. I think that visuals are very important. I, I think that I think that visual quality is is extremely important and it, and it really does play a play a play a play a part in you know, making the games attractive so that they, so that they look good. That, that's the first thing you're going to see is the, is the, is the incredible visuals. And that's going to like, be like, Oh yeah, man. And that's going to help you get immersed in the experience. Like I get that. That happens to me all the time. Every time I see a beautiful game, it's easier to get immersed in like this layers of fear that I'm playing right now. Thanks. Thank Bloober team for, for providing a review code for that because it wasn't even on my radar. And I thought I was asking for, for like a demo or something, uh, like four months ago when I asked for this or whatever, and uh, I was like, I was pretty shocked to see that running in Unreal Engine 5 the way it does and being 60 frames per second, you know, at a lower resolution, but it's in, or still having that 4K and still providing ray tracing and all of that. I was like, wow, man, this, uh, this UE5, I'm really liking the way these visuals look on UE5 more than I ever did on UE4. Like it looks more, I, I, I like the quality of the textures. I like the quality of the materials far better on Unreal Engine 5. So I feel like this is going to be nice. I like the way that the fidelity of the visuals look. They look fuller. They look better. Um, it it adds to the immersion with the with the way these visuals look and the way that you're not seeing like the pop in and the way the things load in. It's really, really nice and it looks good. If you get a chance and you've got the extra spare money, I do recommend picking up layers of fears so that you can see for yourself what a more realistic looking experience on UE5 could potentially look like on your Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5. Uh, the, the biggest thing with it is, is that um, this this is a remaster or a remake of, a, of Layers of Fear from 2016. So it's, it's basically like, boom, like a full on re- remake, remaster or whatever. And it looks incredible. So, and, and I never got a chance to play the first one. So this is, this is my first experience with this game. So I'm going to, if I, if I get through Diablo this weekend, I'm going to try to jump back on that and see if I can get through this layers of fear. Cause it looks incredible. Like, like the atmosphere is like, Whoa, that's incredible. The sound and stuff. Very, very nice. So I, that's something I do want to try to experience as soon as possible so I can get some more content out on it. But overall, man, I'm very excited the gamers on the Xbox platform are more willing to give games a shot. That's what I like about you guys. That's what I like about the Xbox platform. That's one of the biggest things I love about it is Xbox gamers are more willing to give things a try as opposed to like the PlayStation guys just turning their nose up at everything every time they don't think something's quality. And that sucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are real PlayStation fans out there that are just like Xbox guys that are more willing to play just about anything, but you always, you always see Xbox fans more willing to lower their guard and, and give something to try. Whereas, uh, whereas those ponies, man, like, gosh, those guys are so ignorant, so dumb sometimes. And it gets, it gets bad. It's like, wow, dude, how can you guys be so freaking that, that far out that like, that, that, that like, it's more about like the, the sales of the consoles and everything else. And it's like, who cares, man? Are you having fun? Are you playing any games? Are you playing Twitter? I don't know anymore, man. It's, 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 it's getting pretty interesting. So I just want you guys to know that I'm very proud of you, that, that I'm, that I appreciate the Xbox platform. I'm glad to see that we can move forward 
and and not really hang our hats on on the 30 frames per second thing there there are a lot of content creators out there freaking out about it but even good old digital foundry today come out and and, and they agreed with everything i said in 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 my first few videos about it and i mean it's, they they said the exact same thing i said about it it's like yeah dude like this game is pretty freaking massive there's there's a reason why this game here is 30 frames per second locked and and i mean like i i don't get it man it's like if you if you if you hold the line on 30 frames per second is if you draw the line on 30 frames per second you might actually not get a play grand theft auto 6 you might not get a play um um what was it? avatar frontiers you might not get to play the new star wars game from from ubisoft because those right there look like they could potentially be locked at 30 frames per second and um i i think that see i don't know and that's kind of my expectation for open world games this generation is the bigger they get the more physics and the more other things that are that are into these games i could potentially see some of these big triple a developers just locking them to 30 frames per second so if you draw the line on starfield man what happens when something else comes out that you want to play there's no reason to have to go back on what you say later down the road man like i wish that a lot of my other little content creator buddies would have would have jumped in line with me before when i started saying yeah i don't know we're just gonna play the game we're gonna see how it is we're just gonna play the game we're just gonna see how it is we're gonna wait till the game comes out we're gonna stay in here now we're not gonna bash anything we're just gonna we're just gonna move forward with these games and see how they are so if you guys like this content don't forget to like and subscribe man we'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching